Hello, this is Mikey Gay for Scratch, and welcome back to our ongoing default game engine tutorial series. Today we're going to be taking a look at playing sound effects and music using the default game engine. Now, this entire series depends on uh, you having seen or understood all of the stuff covered in the prior tutorial part, so if you have not already gone through the tutorial series, uh, please do start at the beginning. I do assume you have the prior knowledge that we covered. Uh, what we're looking at again, as I said, is we're just gonna be looking at playing sound effects and music, which frankly are exactly the same thing. This is gonna be a pretty quick tutorial because truthfully, the sound effect stuff in the default game engine is simple, both logically and functionally. So in other words, it's pretty easy to learn, pretty easy to use, and pretty simple in what it does. There's a lot of stuff actually missing from there. There's no positional audio. There's no even getting the position in your currently played audio. So if you want to do advanced stuff like, um, you know, cueing things, dynamic sound effects, positional sound effects, etc. This is not in there. You can't even actually tell the current position of a playing audio file uh, unless you do some kind of tracking yourself. So, um, as we're gonna see here, the sound and music functionality built into the default game engine are quite simple. Now, as with other every other part of this tutorial series so far, there is a text version. I've already published it up. Um, so all the code we're going to look at, all the process we are dealing with here is available in text. So if I lose you at some point, don't worry. I will link this down below so you can catch it up there. Uh, now, in order to work with this, we're obviously gonna need a couple of music files. Now, the file format supported by the default game engine, which I suppose I should go ahead and load, um, are the da, 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 uh, og, vor, og Vorbis format, which is um, sort of an open source implementation of the MP3 file format. Uh, they're compressed audio uh, for generally for longer length um, kind of sound effect or music files. And then the other one is Wave. And Wave is the pretty much industry standard for um, relatively unencoded simple audio sound files. Uh, what they basically boil down to is the Og, Vor Og Vorbis format, which is hard to say amazingly enough, is compressed and thus requires uh, less disk space but more CPU usage and probably more memory ultimately because it does need to be decompressed um, in memory, etc. But you can stream it so you can have very long files without more of an impact. So where this really works out is in your, um, your music files generally your long form stuff that would be um, several um, several seconds long to several minutes long. So uh, your soundtrack, possibly recorded audio, that kind of stuff, you would generally put in an AUG file. Uh, otherwise, you would put it in the WAVE sound format. And WAVE has um, less encoding, so what that means is less CPU hit. So it takes up more memory on disk, but it takes up probably less memory to play it and less um, CPU to actually play the sound effect. And this is where you would put your you know your gunshots your uh, quick repeated sound effects would often be a uh, good format for the wave of pun not intended uh, so we're going to go ahead here and i'm going to open up a project i've already created it's empty um but I'll call this music I'll go ahead and run that new branch youtube demo all right we'll let that come in and the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create a new group here. This is completely man, um, optional, but I wanna organize all of the actual raw assets together in a folder called audio, like so. So we have a new folder called audio, and I'm just gonna come down here to my desktop, and you see here I have rotv.ogg and rooster.wave. I'm just gonna grab both of those files, and we're gonna drag that into the audio folder. All right, so we now have our two files available to us, a WAV file and an OGG file. Now let's go ahead and use them. Now using them is simply a matter of um, adding a component to our game object. So you can put them wherever you want. We could actually create a game object called Music Player and have it own all of the different sound effects if we wished. Or we could have one called Music Player and then one called the Sound Effects Player or Sound Effects Manager or whatever. Uh, or you can have your um, audio effects actually owned by uh, you know your game. So if your player has a bounce sound he plays when he jumps, that could be attached directly to your player's game object. How you want to organize it is 100% up to you. In this case, I'm going to keep it simple. Just go with the typical, you know, we're using a normal main um, default empty starting project. And I'm just going to add the sound effects to this guy. So if you come in here to the game object, whatever game object you want to go ahead and add this to, just right click and add component. And you'll notice down here you've got sound. And that's it. This first guy we're going to rename to music. And we're going to pick the sound effect for it. And we'll pick rotv.ogg. Now you have the option for looping or not looping. And you can set a decibel gain. This is the value from 0 to 1. This basically is how long or how loud to play the song. 
And you'll notice down here, there's also this group called master. And that's the default group that all audio files will be in. And this one, I'm gonna actually go ahead and change that to music. And I'll explain why I did that in a moment. But so now we created, um, Actually, that's a little confusing. Uh, no, I'll keep it consistent. I could have called it music group. The fact that this name and this name are the same have nothing to do with each other, coincidentally. So this group could have been called whatever the heck I wanted it to. Um, so now we've got music. I'm gonna go ahead and just create another one. Add component, sound. We'll call this guy SFX. Uh, we'll go ahead and pick our wave file and we'll leave him in master. And I'll explain groups in a second, so don't worry too much about that. And just go ahead and save. Uh, now, next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and actually create a script. Uh, main uh, script. All right, and let's go back to our collection for a second, go to our game object, and we will attach our script. If I'm losing you on any of this, it was all covered in previous tutorials. So um, if you wanna look about how scripts work, how to attach them, etc., just go back a couple tutorials. It's all covered there. All right, so we now have a script attached to our game object. Our game object will be created when our game starts up, and we wanna go ahead and automatically create and play our music. And you're gonna see just how easy this actually is right now. Now, bu 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 bu. all right, so I want to go over here to our newly created script, and right, we don't care about you, you, and we will be using input later on. So in our init, uh, I'm gonna put one line of code. Okay, so we'll just do it for now. Message.post, so it's all message-based. Basically, we wanna just send a message to our component named music. Remember, we named it music here. So it's named music and it's owned by our game object. So as you remember from our script, our short form for the current object is the hashtag. So hashtag and music. So that will send it to the music component of the current game object. And we are just sending it the command play sound. Like so. And that's it, that should play our sound file, no problems, go ahead and build it. Oh, I got my speakers turned down, hopefully. And there you can hear it. Hopefully that's not too loud, but you can hear um, Wagner's uh, Ride of the Valkyrie playing in the background there, which by the way came from Wikipedia, a uh, free media uh, license, so uh, if you want to grab something of your own, it's available right on their Wikipedia page. Just search for uh, Ride of the Valkyrie uh, OGG. I just needed to find a record that was shareable. Uh, so there you go. That's all that's involved in actually going ahead and playing uh, a music file. Now I'm going to add a little bit more input here. And we covered all this earlier, but uh, we're gonna just create a couple of triggers here for uh, different events. Uh, I just wanna make sure my naming convention is exactly the same here. So space pressed. So space bar event, key underscore space. It would be the one at the very, very top. Space pressed. All right, and we're gonna have volume up and volume down. So we're gonna also change this one to key up. Why is this not in alphabetical order? Oh, that's confusing. Here, let me see if I can key up. I can't. All right, one second. It's gotta locate key up. Up, there we go. Yeah, and this one is going to be key down. Yep, yeah. all right, perfect. And I shall call the down arrow and, oh, that's confusing. Up arrow, all right. So we've got our input bindings now, so we can now respond to these basically keyboard input. So we've now can respond to space bar, uh, up arrow and down arrow. We're gonna use those in this example so we've got coming up. And the first one we're gonna do is when you hit the space bar, uh, we're gonna play our other sound effect. And let's just go in here and we will basically go, if action underscore ID equals hash uh, space pressed, and action dot pressed equals true. So we only fire this on key down and not up. Then, and, 
All right. So here, we're going to play our sound effect. Now, you remember, so we just played music. You will recall our sound effect was called SFX. And playing it, I bet you guessed this one. Post hashtag SFX, hashtag, and play sound, like so. Go ahead and run that. And we get our background music as normal. But if I hit the space bar, nothing happens because I am a bit of an idiot. Uh, in order to receive keyboard events, we also have to post this one message, which was covered in the uh, input and scripting that we just did last time. Acquire, input, focus. All right. Let's run that now. Space bar, and you can hear our rooster. Now, one thing to notice about the way sound effects work here is by default, every time I hit the space bar, we get another play of the sound effect. Now, I'll go ahead and stop that because it's freaky. Uh, if you want to get around that, you can either send another message called play um, or stop sound. I think I should actually verify that one one second quickly. All right. Uh, so yeah, you'll notice I'm here now in the, the sound reference. And you see here, this is a play sound that we've been sending so far. Uh, there's also this option here for uh, stop sound. So if you wanted to stop a currently playing sound, you could send this and then reuse it. Or you can actually, uh, if you go into their tutorials, there's an example there on gating sound. So you can easily create like an audio player over top that prevents it from playing the sound until the previous one ends, etc. Um, so the, the basic default behavior, though, is to keep just playing the particular sound that's there. Now, one thing that is there is a limit of 32 voices per sound component, uh, which is a long-form way of saying you can play that sound effect up to 32 times at a time. So if you have um, concurrent gunshots going on, you can have up to 32 concurrent going. And that's it. That is really the extent of playing audio in... Um, in the default engine. It's, it's not a difficult process at all. Now, the next thing we're gonna do though is show you how to actually control uh, the volume. And this is done. Uh, we can do it part of the play sound process, but we can also do it after the fact. So once that sound is playing, we're gonna do it with the music though, because it's a little easier to notice on. Uh, so let's do a different, um, yeah, we'll do this as an else if. Else if. So remember we defined a couple of inputs at the very beginning. So uh, we got up arrow and down arrow. So up arrow and down arrow. Now, one thing you'll notice if you go through this, uh, this API documentation that I just had up right here, there's no way to actually get either the position of the sound or the current volume of the sound. And that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna change the volume of a currently playing sound. So in order to do that, we're gonna actually have to track the volume ourselves. Easy enough though, so we'll just go up here and create a local variable called volume equals 1.0. Now this is a value, volume is a value from zero to one. So one is basically 100%, zero is zero, so no sound at all. And in the case of the up arrow, we're just gonna do the simple logic of uh, if, then if volume is greater than, uh, oh, we're doing up, so that's volume less than or equal to 1.0, then volume equals volume plus 0.1. We're just going to increase it to 10% increments. Um, and, and all right. So we just changed the volume. That's just to present us from going past one. And finally, now that we've got our updated volume, we wanna actually go ahead and tell the default engine that for our music file to change the volume up. This is done with message.post. And we're going to the music. So hashtag music. And set gain. And gain takes a parameter called gain. And we will pass in our volume like so. I think I have the right number of parentheses and brackets there. And save. And now through the magic of cut and paste coding, which no doubt I will make a mistake now. Is greater than or equal to zero. Then 
subtract this time. Otherwise, our logic is exactly the same. And I got a lot of extraneous. All right, let's go ahead and run that. So you can hear our music. And as I press the down arrow, you can't hear our music. And then plus arrow or up arrow, and our volume comes back up. So there's how you can control the volume. Uh, now the final thing we want to touch on here before we go elsewhere is that groups. Now remember back here when I set the sound effects, or actually I set the music file into its own group. Well, you would actually probably do this was on those sound effects. And if you wanted to mute all of them at once, for example, it gives you the ability to do a bunch of things to an entire set of sound effects all at the same time. So now we're gonna do is just go ahead and if the user hits uh, the escape key, did I? Ah, oh, crap, I didn't get the escape key. All right, I need one more. Add trigger, all right. Key underscore escape. And that, there it is, all right. And we'll just the escape. So if the user hits the escape key, we're just going to stop playing the music. And through the there we go. All right. And in this case, we're doing it with a group. So sound dot set group gain. This should be giving me IntelliSense, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. I probably made a typo, uh, but name the group. Once again, we're going to encode it, so we use hash. Remember, we called it music. So again, this is not the same as the fragment name. This is just because I named the group music, which was confusing. I probably shouldn't have done that, so I apologize. Okay, so we tell it which group to actually set the gain on, and we tell it which gain to set it to. So again, 0.0 um, .0 is effectively no volume at all. And right number parentheses, yes, I think I'm good to go. Let's do a build. And then you can hear our music playing. If I hit the escape key, it's done. So as you can see, you can set, when using groups, you can, um, you know, uh, affect a number of sound effects at the exact same time. Now, if you go back to the documentation, you'll see uh, there's group game, you can name a group, get a group, etc. Now you'll notice here, there's a couple of API calls here also for doing things like checking to see if the, there's currently sound playing on the local device, such as from iTunes, if a phone call is happening, um, and but otherwise you can, you know, uh, set uh, the RMS value, RMS value is explained here, root mean square, uh, it's explained well and fully in their documentation. It's not something I'm going to go to into here. Uh, peak uh, value, etc. for entire groups. You can also name a group um, and get groups dynamically. So uh, that's about it for the API. There's not much more going on here. Uh, and that's about it for this video. So once again, there is a text-based version. I will link it down below. If you do enjoy that, please do click like. And if you'd like to see similar tutorials, please do click subscribe. All right, see y'all later.